Question number one. Oh, Seely's sister had one. All right, so I want to hear her question. I'm just really curious. Then I'll go to Sister Sheila. Yeah. Man, sorry, I let you down. This is actually Robert's question. Oh, Robert. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, then she. <laughs> Uh, it's okay, I already said it, so, uh, but I, I, I think I know Sister Sheila's question, so we'll go to her later. So, Sister Danielle? Okay, he said, um, Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 through 4, mm -hmm. and this uh, was his question about post tribulation. So, I know his question, so it's okay, I can explain it. So, Deuteronomy, but I just want to make sure I get the verse right. 24 what? 1 through 4, okay. All right, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 24, and we'll read verses 1 through 4. All right, the question concerning Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Now, I know some people online are kind of frustrated. They couldn't hear the question, so I'm really sorry about that. But I got two attached mics over here, and it takes a lot of work to put this on. And then I have to take it off and give it to somebody else, you know, and then put it back on. It's going to be the pain in the neck. So... I'm just going to uh, explain what they asked. Mm -hmm. If I forget that, then please let me know, okay? All right, Deuteronomy chapter 24, the question is this. If you look at verse 1, when a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorce, excuse me, divorcement, and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and giveth it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which, her, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, this is key, may not take her again to be his wife. After that she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Now, this is the question. Deuteronomy chapter 24, you can see right here that God doesn't like it when a person divorces from verses 1 through 4 and reclaims it. So when you divorce somebody, you don't reclaim the same person, okay? So we're not talking about that divorcing and remarriage is a sin. That's not the issue. I already... 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Matthew chapter 19, as well as Romans chapter 7, will show you that there are three grounds to uh, marriage, divorce, and remarriage. So it is biblical. But you can't remarry in the, in the sense of the same person. See that? Because that is considered abomination to God. Why? Because you already separated from the person. See that? Because I don't know if some of you know this, but marriage in God's eyes throughout the Bible. Now, s some people don't believe this, but a good number of Bible believers know this to be true. Marriage is not considered to be a ceremony. Marriage is considered to be flesh joining flesh. God automatically sees you and sees that as marriage. You might say, where's that case? Well, if you look at Ephes... Uh, if you Look at Genesis chapter 2, as well as Ephesians chapter uh, 5, was it 4 or 5? The verse shows over here that it's relationship of husband and wife, see marriage, just like Adam and Eve. But you don't see a, a wedding band over there. You don't see the government hall or offices that you have to fill out forms. It is basically flesh joining flesh. So God considers that marriage. Why do you think God hates fornication then? See that? See? See? fornication is evil in God's eyes because he automatically sees that as marriage. So then how many, uh, how many uh, husbands or wives spread around the world that you've already, uh, you've already corrupted and those same people are uh, fornicating with other people so they have multiple marriages. See that? Mm -hmm. See that? That's a corruption in God's eyes. Yeah. That's a lot of perversion and corruption to him. Because he sees that uh, when flesh joins flesh, stick that way. See that? That way it's all cleaned out. Not everybody intermingling with each other. And who likes to do that? Remember at Genesis 6? Okay, so anyways, so fornication, that's why God hates it. 
That's why God also hates divorce. You've got to reconcile, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. However, because you come across understandable situations, as mentioned before, there are exceptions, and then there are three grounds of exception, and that's Romans chapter 7, death, that's Matthew chapter 19, I could be wrong about that, because uh, remember, I'm doing all this from memory, okay? So this is, uh, the ground is fornication, so cheating on the spouse, right? And then the third one is 1 Corinthians 7, departure. So the person does the divorce, does the separation from you. Okay, now basically the question is this. So we realize that that is sin. The question is used by replacement theology. Some of you is, are asking, what is replacement theology? Replacement theology, they believe that the church replaces the nation of Israel permanently, and because of that, God is no longer, his promises to the nation of Israel are invalid. They're done. So that is what replacement theology teaches. However, Christians deny this. So replacement theology thinks Israel equals church. Why? Because all the previous promises God gave to Israel, the church can reclaim that because the church replaces Israel. See that? However, dispensationalists deny this. We believe that there is a division. No, God has a separate program with Israel as well as a separate program with the church. Now, their favorite passage is to point out a passage in Hosea where God divorced Israel. So because God divorced Israel, it would be abomination that he reclaims it. See that? Why? Because of the book of Deuteronomy. So that's their argument over there. Now, you might say, what's, uh, how do you debunk that? That's a very difficult verse to uh, debunk. No, it's very easy. You might say, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. You might say, no, it's not. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the simple answer, okay? Look at verse 1. See, the divorce of that time is if, as lo if a man finds anything that he doesn't like about his wife, he can divorce her. Do you practice that today? No, you're not supposed to actually. Nope. See that? You might say, man, rules were hard that time. Yeah, you know why? Because that was their culture that time. So some atheists and liberals, they'll use this argument. They'll, they'll, they'll keep looking at Mosaic laws to find hard rules and mean rules that, oh, this can, God, our God, your God is not a loving God. No, the simple answer to that is this. If you put today's American culture during that time, You'd burden the people that time. You got to realize this. American culture is not everybody's culture. Yep. And even an honest liberal will admit that I cannot be biased and I can't be discriminatory by putting everybody within my own culture. So you can use that as a powerful argument against a liberal where they try to find problems with your Bible and then you can accuse them of not being culturally sensitive. Okay, anyways. I mean, if you don't believe me, if all you have to do is look at Matthew 19. When Jesus mentioned about this bill of divorcement, that Jesus said God actually didn't like that, where you just divorce for uh, no good reason, it, whenever you want to. And the people, they, all, the, the people, the culture that time, they responded, this is a hard saying. <laughs> no, it's not to us, right? You're like thinking, no, you, uh, Jesus is right, right? Yeah, so you got to realize that. Now, so that's the simple debunking to this one. The simple debunking to this is that this is Old Testament. That's why we're, old, that's why we're dispensationalists. This does not apply to Christians. If you want to, then there are, there are two problems to this. One, then uh, they're condoning you can divorce whenever you want. So men can act like jerks, and anything that he finds displeasure in a woman, he can divorce her which these replacement theology hypocrites aren't able to do. The second hypocrisy is this. A lot of these people, replacement theology guys, don't even believe in divorce. So why would they even use the verse about uh, God divorcing and reclaiming if they don't even believe in that? So did God sin? So you know what this powerfully proves? This powerfully proves that God's divorce method and reclaiming has to be different from man. See that? And the very... And you just look at verse 1. When a what? Man. Man. There you go. You might say, why does God do 
does things differently with man. Isn't that unfair? No, it's not unfair. You know why? Man, when they, with mankind, listen up now. You human beings, all right, we got a divorce problem going on in this country and around the world. We just divorce like, wa like it's drinking water and breathing air. God, when he divorces, he doesn't, do, he doesn't do it like mankind. He does it on understandable conditions and reasons. Look, if God's been patient with Israel for nearly a thousand years when they were sacrificing babies to idols, look, God has good reasons for doing so. And not only that, because God gave an everlasting promise to Abraham, God has good reasons for doing so. See that? So that's why he's different from man, and he can do things that are different from us. All right. So that's a simple answer to that one.